Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Gina and you're watching The Pink Trellis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own macrame plant hanger. Some of you may know this, but most of you don't know that I am a fiber artist and I've been selling my work on Etsy since about 2017. So some of the fiber art that I work with is macrame, that's my main one, and then I do weavings, wall weavings, and I've done felting. So I'll show you a couple of my works. Well right behind me is, here let me lift this up. That's a wall hanging I've made, macrame. It's also a, a combination um, macrame and weaving because it has the weaving in the macrame. And this is one of my woven wall hangings and um, it's made with some yarns and wool um, and it's all weaving. There's no macrame in this piece. And then finally um, some of my felting work I've made are these cute little felted animals. This is a sheep. I love the little feet. And a bunny rabbit with real ang angora rabbit fur. Just a little feet. I just love the feet and the little tail and the face and hedgehog. These are really fun to make and so cute. So those are a few examples of some of the fiber art that I have done. So in my um, previous plant shopping tour video, um, when I walked into the shop, one of the first things I saw was this most adorable macrame wall hanging with a ponytail palm um, hanging in it. And that combination just really just struck me. It was just so adorable, the combination, and you don't usually see upright plants in um, uh, planter, hanging planters and mostly you get your trailing plants, which is kind of boring now that I see the tall growing plant in the macrame plant hanger. So right away I knew that I just, I really wanted to recreate that combination. I love the style of the plant hanger. I had never made that style before. Um, and then uh, with the ponytail palm in it, it's just, it's just so cute. And I know I'm not the only one who thought this because in the comments there were a few people who also um, pointed it out that they really liked that combination. So the other day I set some time aside and I created um, um, that macrame plant hanger and it turned out really cute. And then yesterday I went back to that shop and I picked up one of the ponytail palms and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, the combination together that I made. So after I made the plant hanger, it dawned on me that, well, I should show you guys how to create your own because it's pretty simple and um, it looks so cute. And there were a few of you, like I said, that really like the combination. So um, I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step on how to make this macrame plant hanger, and then you'll have to go find your own ponytail palm or any other plants you'd wanna put in it. So there are a few um, items you're gonna need to make this, to do this project. The big one is you're gonna have to find or get some, some sort of string. Now I use this, this is for macrame, and this is 100% um, cotton string. Um, this is like a five millimeter size. And of course, most people don't have this sitting around their house, um, but you may have some yarn and you can definitely use yarn for this. So you're also gonna need a pair of good sturdy scissors. And then finally, you're gonna need um, something to hang this on. 
Um, most people, I use um, rings for this. So you can go with a wood ring. You can do a metal ring like this. This is a craft ring. You can probably find these at places like Michael's. I buy mine on Amazon. And then finally, you can use a binder ring that you find at an office supply shop or Michael's has these as well. You just need something, and it doesn't even have to be round, but something that you can hang your rope from. So that's it. That's all the supplies you need to do this. Um, probably the biggest thing is uh, finding the time to do this because it does take some time um, cutting all the pieces and putting them all together. Um, so now I'm going to show you the wall hanging. There it is. Isn't it cute? Get you a close up of it. Of course, with the lighting, it's really hard to see. But, and for this project, I'm using the gold ring because I just think it looks the most elegant. And this is such an elegant combination. At least I think so. All right, so we are ready to get started. I have my ring here. Um, oh, it's so cute, isn't it? I just love it so much. So, just so cute. I love that ponytail poem. All right, so you're gonna need 163 feet of rope or yarn or whatever um, material you're gonna use to make this wall or plan hanger. I keep saying wall hanging, plan hanger. And then one other item that I forgot to mention that you will need to do this project is you're gonna need a uh, measuring tape so you can measure out your pieces of string. Okay, so let's get to some basics. Um, in macrame, there are different types of knots that we use. In this project, we're only going to be using three knots. We're gonna be using the overhand knot, we're gonna be using the gathering knot, and we're going to be using the lark's head knot. All right, so we've hung our ring. Now we're going to cut our first strings. Um, we're gonna need three pieces that are 10 feet long each. So you want to use your measuring tape to measure out 10 feet long of your material, whether it's yarn or rope. So I have a special technique that I use when I'm cutting my rope. If I stretch my arms out, like, and I take my rope and I do that from this hand to this hand stretched out, that is five feet just works out so conveniently for me. All right, so I need 10 feet. So that's five feet. So now I have 10 feet and I cut it. And I have my first of three 10 foot pieces of rope. So that te technique may not work for you. Um, I'm like almost 5'4", so when I stretch out, I'm like, it's five feet here. Um, so you may have to just use a measuring tape to uh, cut your pieces, um, but try it, try it and see. All right, so I have my three 10-foot pieces of string or rope cut, and now we're gonna put these onto the ring, and we're just going to put them over like that, just drape them over. And you want to get them, make sure that it's even on the ring. All right, so you saw how I make sure that my rope is evenly spaced on the ring. All right, so now we're ready to get started with our very first knot, and that is the gathering knot. So for the gathering knot, you're gonna need two and a half feet of rope. 
So measure that out with your measuring tape, or in my case, I just go half my body length with the arms outstretched. All right, so we have to change our angle here because with the windows in the background, it's too bright to see. All right, so our gathering knot. Take your two and a half um, foot piece of string and bring it behind your rope like that. Bring it around, holding it the best you can. And you're gonna do a loop like that. You want this little loop. All right, so we have our loop. Then we're gonna take this end and we're gonna wrap it around. I do like 10 times, that's two, three, and you're covering, you're wrapping around the string you looped and your working strings. Three, four, you can do however many uh, wrap arounds you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. I do ten. Eight. Nine. And ten. Like that. All right, so you still have a little bit of the loop left down here at the bottom. You're going to take this end and you're going to Feed it through that loop, like that. And then, you're gonna, remember this little piece up here? You're gonna pull up, and that pulls your string behind and in. Here, and that is your gathering knot. So then you're going to cut away this extra, this piece, and this piece. So now you're left with your original working strings. And you have a nice gathering knot for your plant hanger. So the um, plant hanger I'm making, um, the dimensions of it are going to work best with a six inch planter. Uh, you can adjust your measurements on your own if you like to um, make it smaller for a smaller planter size. Um, and even like a four inch would fit in this, but ideally a six inch planter works best. All right, so the next knot we're going to be using is called the overhand knot. And I guarantee you've made this knot before in your lifetime. It's uh, just your standard knot. So we have um, six working strings. One, two, three, four, five, six. You wanna grab two close together and you're, we're gonna measure 19 inches down from the bottom of the gathering knot so you'll need your tape measure for this. We're going 19 inches down. Which is right there. And we're going to put an a overhand knot right here. So we're at 19 inches here. We're going to take it and just your standard knot like that. So then we're going to grab two more strings close together. And when I say close together, I mean that they're right next to each other. You don't want to use like this string and one back here. That doesn't work. 
these two are right next to each other. So then we're going to tie another knot. We don't have to measure again because we know this is at 19 inches. So we're just going to make sure that we make our next knot at the same uh, position or level. like that. And then we're going to do the same thing again with our last two pieces of string. So now we have three um, overhand knots in our string. Alright, so now we're going to do some more overhand knots. But this time we're going to take one piece of string from this side and then one from this one, like that. And we're going to measure seven inches down from this overhand knot, so that's seven inches. And we're going to put another overhand knot here. Like that. So now we're going to do that again. We're going to take this string here and we're going to grab this one. And we're going to go down seven inches and do another overhand knot. Now you can see this one is a little bit lower. I'm going to redo that because I'd like them to be equal um, lengths. So we just undo that knot and try it again. There. Now they're at the same level. All right, so then we take our last two pieces and we're going to do another overhand knot at this 7 inch mark. Just like that. So now we have three overhand knots up here and we have three overhand knots down here. All right, so now we're going to do another gathering knot to connect all these together at the bottom. So we're going to measure four inches down from these uh, overhand knots, which is about right there. And we're going to do the same gathering knot we did up at the top. Make your loop and then wrap and I will do 10 times again. So this extra piece here, we actually can leave this one because we're only going to leave about a four inch tassel at the bottom of this plant hanger. So I'm going to measure four inches down. Yeah, four inches is shorter than this piece here. So four inches and cut. 
So right about here. And that part is done. So now you can take your planter and see how it fits in your plant hanger, like that. So that is the base of our plant hanger. And the next step is to add the fringe. So adding the fringe is the most tedious part of doing this plant hanger because you need to cut um, 90 pieces of 17 inch length rope and you have to put them all on here. So I highly recommend pulling up a chair, which I did because you're going to be here a while putting the cutting the rope and then putting the fringe onto the plant hanger. So as I said, we need 90 pieces of 17 inch length rope. And if you remember, we cut the tassel on this at the bottom. So this is our excess rope from that. And we can use that for um, some of the rope we need. So we try not to waste any rope. So we take one of those pieces that we um, got from the tassel and we're gonna measure 17 inches down which is right there, and we're gonna cut that. So there's one piece of 17 inch rope. So we're gonna use this as our um, standard for cutting the rest of these. So this is our 17 inch. We're going to cut. So now we just need to do that 88 more times. It sounds like a lot, doesn't it? It will take you a while. All right, so I haven't cut all of my 90 pieces yet, but I wanted to show you how we do the next knot, which is the lark's head knot, and that'll be for the fringe. We're going to put fringe here, 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 here and here. I don't know if I said that one yet, but there's six strands or six strings where we're gonna put fringe. And there's gonna be 15 pieces on each length. So that equals 90. All right, so let me show you the lark's head knot. You're gonna take your 17 inch piece of string and you're gonna make a U shape like this. Flip it around so it's an upside down U. Then we're gonna take our length of string here and we're gonna slip this behind like that. And then we're gonna take this end and we're gonna put it through the loop, just like that. And then you pull. Make sure you have equal lengths down at the bottom and then pull. And that is the lark's head knot. We're gonna move this down to the bottom and we're gonna do the next one. Take our next 17 inch piece. It's actually easier to do this with the basket knot there, but I think for showing purposes, you can see it easier with the basket there. Get those equal lengths at the bottom. And then, so now we have two lark's head knots made. And that's the start of our fringe. So we're gonna do that 13 more times.
All right, so an hour or two later, we have filled each of these with 15 pieces. And that is it. That is pretty simple, right? It takes a lot of time, but overall it's a pretty simple um, project. So hopefully that was clear and easy and to follow along with. And um, let me know if you think that might be something you would do um, in the future. You can let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear if anyone tried it. Um, and for those who would love to have one of those plan hangers but don't have the time to uh, put aside to make it, I do have um, my website going now. It's thepinktrellis.com and I do have them for sale on there. So I have the macrame for sale on my website, as well as some plants. So be sure to check it out, thepinktrellis.com. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. It really helps my channel to grow. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!